Jared Poland from NosePhoto.com and welcome back to another rapid fire critique where I take your best 10 images and give them a critique. My critique -erson. Now, before we jump into the critique, if you haven't downloaded my Gear Vault just yet, it is my app. Please go check it out in the Apple App Store. It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. We all have a lot of gear, so why don't you get it organized so you know what you have and what it's worth, and it's free. In the Apple App Store right now, under My Gear Vault, coming at the end of June 2017 for Android. Now let's get into the critique, McCritikerson. And here we have Kyle Sinson. Kyle Sinson, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Followed the rules. Good, good. Let's go in here and see what we have. We have a shot taken with an icon D7100 with the Tokina ATX. Uh, 11 to 16, 2.8. All right, 25 seconds, 4,000 ISO, 11 millimeters, shot at 2.8 wide open. Now that is how you are generally supposed to shoot star photos. Now I shot some star photos out at the Grand Canyon about two years ago, and I learned fairly quick that it's pretty easy to get good exposures for the sky. The recommendations, keep it below roughly 25, 30 seconds, uh, because the longer that you have your shutter open, the more you're gonna get some blur in the, uh, what are they called? Stars that are in the sky because the Earth is always rotating because if it stops rotating, we're probably dead. So it's always rotating. So you wanna keep the exposure below 25 or 20 seconds is, is a good thumb uh, rule of thumb. You wanna shoot at the widest aperture and you wanna focus in on the stars the best way that you can. Um, a lot of people say go to infinity and pull back. I say go to infinity and beyond. Actually, I just try to focus in on a star in the sky somewhere because that's where I think I'll get the sharpness. Uh, and you get your ISO where you need it to be, you take the picture. Love the colors going on in the shot and like the fact that you have something in the foreground. It helps you show dimension. Because when I was out there, I just had the Grand Canyon in the ground and I couldn't really use that as a foreground element. I could have gone and sought out some cactus or some uh, something, but you went here and you got this barn and it looks good in the foreground. Now I can't tell if you lit it up a little bit, popped a little flash or shined some light in on it, but it looks good. It shows that the world and the earth and and, well, we're not alone. There's billions and billions of stars. So nice shot right there. This one, not as much. A little more on the boring side. Too much emphasis on the wood in this. Oh, there's a watermark. There's a watermark. 406 exposure. All right, 406 exposure watermark. At least it's not right in the middle of the photo. But I did notice it. Uh, way too much emphasis on the wood in this case. I want to see more emphasis on the water, the colors, the background, or make this black and white. Not, a, not that it's going to save it. And I don't say make things black and white to try to save images. But sometimes black and white does really bring an image out. Not so much saves it. Maybe it does save it, but it brings it out. Uh, in terms of horizontal, if you use these two poles, shot maybe a little higher and shot it horizontal, wider, you could get more of the color and tones in there. So it's okay, it's not great. That's done with the 11 to 16 as well. Moving on, hey, he's like, what's up? I am holding this girl, 70 to 300. All right, kit lens, look what it did. Blew the background out, again proof that you could blow the background out with anything that you have if you know what you're doing. All right, let's take a look at the shot. Are we upset that he cut off the hands of him holding her up here? I'm upset about it. Uh, one little step back or shooting a little tighter in on this case could work, but I always say don't shoot too tight all the time because you lose context of the situation, where in this case we have beautiful context, so nice job getting the bridge in there, the snow and the out of focus trees, conifers or whatever the hell they are, pine knee trees in the background, but you cut, her, you cut off his hands. So I'm not a fan of that part of it, but I like the rest of the shot uh, there. Mm. Our love is burning like this wood in the fire. Here's some wood. It's blocking my wood. All right, I mean, it's all right. Oy, oy, oy. Oy, oy, oy. I mean, maybe because I haven't been married or really have ever had shots taken with a girlfriend or something. I don't get it. I've taken shots like this. Now put your foreheads together. Usually I'm like, now tongue each other. I actually have pictures of that because they were a cool bride and groom and they did tongue each other for the photos and it looked great. Um, this is fine, but I mean, it's just like, what is the, 
unless I know that these people are loggers and they make fires, then I probably don't like the fact that they're in front of a burning fire with wood in the foreground. What do you guys think? Let me know. I mean, that's the point of a critique. Give me, give me some feedback. Hey, I like that. No, Alexa, not you. Don't turn on. Sorry. No, Alexa, no. stop. Stupid Alexa. No, not you, Alexa, not you. Thank you. Um, love the black and white. Love the tones. Love what's going on in the image. Love what's, I just, I love the image. May have gone too far on the contrast, in my opinion, just a little bit right here. Pop some fill up into here, bring that back, and I think it would be good. I would like it to be a little wider to see more, but though it was shot at 11 millimeters, it doesn't get much wider than that on this camera. Um, yeah, I mean, it's okay. Uh, I don't know if this rock is distracting me, but I do love what's going on in this part of the image, so take that for what it is. I give it a nice thumbs up. This one... Mm. Eh, interesting actually now that I look at it a little closer. 17 to 50, good 2.8 lens, one of the oldest lenses they've ever had for the DX, came out way early when the D3s, uh, not the D3s, but when the D2s hit the market, probably maybe a little bit before that. Um, it's okay, we've got the water going here, maybe the black and white would be good, but I think they probably didn't go black and white because you lost it down here because it's more in a shadow area than than the mountains which are exposed back here, which look beautiful with the bathed sun there. Uh, but I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to say as a landscape because I'm not a huge landscape photographer slash fan of it, of landscape stuff, but it doesn't just grab me. And, and I look for things that grab me in the image right off the bat because I think a good image is a good image is a good image no matter what. This is okay, it just doesn't grab me. Moving on. All right, I mean, it didn't grab me as well either. It's exposed for the sky here. We don't have a lot of light going in on here. You've got a streak from a, it's definitely, definitely not an airplane. And by definitely not, I mean it's absolutely an airplane streaking there. It's all right. It just, it just doesn't, does it have the oomph? I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just trying to say, when you see an image that grabs you, it just, it grabs you. It reaches out and it's like, bam grabs you. In this case, doesn't so much as grab me, um, and I don't have much in the way of feedback to say what could make this one better. All right, now that's interesting. See, see, see what I'm talking about though? Sometimes interesting grabs you, and it makes you think and makes you look deeper into the image, whereas sometimes the snapshots just go, nah, nah. But this case, this one grabbed me a little more, because I like the chair lifts going, even though they're moving and there's some Something, so where's the motion? 30 seconds. Ah, you know what I think the movement is? They're not moving, they're stopped. The movement's coming from them shaking in the wind or something on the line. But what's cool is you can't even see the line so much. You can see the pole down here, but it's really, really cool. So I like what you did here. Probably stacked the hell out of it, but it looks really good. I like it. I do, I like this one a lot. It makes you think, and I like the color. Nice job. And then this is just boring again. Too much dead space down here at the bottom. Not enough sharpness, not enough contrast, not enough light. I just, it's just more of a snapshot. This one is, is pretty blah, in my opinion. Um, just the wrong time of day, there's not enough light. So I don't think it's really popping because of that. Uh, and it's not an interesting scene as much. So, moving on. So it's good practice to go with the 30 seconds at uh, 11 millimeters, 100 ISO. Like, it's good practice to get the ghosting of the water going. But in terms of the image, it's, it's again, not interesting. It's just not interesting what's going on here. Maybe if we came up closer to the waterfall and had this element of the, the what is this, log, the thing's called a log, a log, where otters and woodchucks and beavers go, um, Maybe putting that into the foreground closer would be better. It's just, it's just a boring shot, especially with this up here, like this tree area. It just, it doesn't exude awesomeness, and that's really what I have to say about it. I think there's some nice shots going on here. I like the, I love the first one. I love this one. 
Uh, the black and whites on this are tremendous. I like the tones and I like the focus that you're getting with a shot like this. Just be careful with what you cut off and find that different angle. And I like the fact that you're trying. There's Kyle, nice job here. There's, there's a bunch of different things that are going on in the images. Uh, you could see that you love landscape, so I, I would keep it up. Just try those different angles. Try finding, just try finding those things in the foreground like you did with the first image to bring things out in the frame. So if you would like to submit your best 10 images for a rapid fire critique, head on over to bit.ly slash fro critiques to submit your link to the best 10 images. It could be a Flickr link, it could be a 500 pics link. And don't forget to go download my Gear Vault in the Apple App Store coming soon at the end of June 2017 for Android. If you haven't done it yet, please do it. It's free and I think you'll like and enjoy using it. It will help you organize all your stuff that you have. You can put anything into it, not just camera gear. There you have it, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.